it's my prayer this morning that everyone will grasp the reality of this demand on our lives. Skill is a requirement for the fulfillment of every dream, dream and the accomplishment of every vision. In Psalm 78, we read about a man called David, verses 70 through 72. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 70. He chose David also, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ears, great with young. He brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. Verse 72. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart. He guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. He guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. He guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. So the fulfillment of his mission, the accomplishment of his purpose, was not only based on the divine calling upon his life and his integrity, but it also required skill for him to fulfill his mission. Very important. So no matter how heavenly your calling is, no matter how genuine your heart you are in the pursuit of that, without skill, your pursuit will never deliver. To every trade, there is a required skill. Proverbs 22 and verse 29, it says, Seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, men. Another translation says, Seest thou a man that is skillful in his business? Skillful. Because wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. By strength shall no man prevail. Did you understand what I'm saying? Proverbs 22 and verse 29, Seest thou a man that is skillful in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me men. Skillful, skillful. So it is your skill that largely determines your rating in your vocation, in your career, in your profession. Is someone hearing what I'm talking about? So the quality of your skill determines the quality of your output. Before they give you another job as a builder, they want to be convinced by the one you have done before. So they want to go and check which one you did before. So if it doesn't like the way it stands, then you can't get a job. A mechanic, a motor mechanic that does not know his job, no matter how hard he pray, he will not have good business. And the one who knows his job, no matter how less he's pray, he prays, he will always get results. Because before we go to him, there are people that we use who are not Christians in the same field where there are Christians. Why? They know the job. And you want the job done. You want to get value for your money. So you look for the man who can do it. Skill, it has, it's one of the most neglected aspects of Christian ethics. And it has pushed us so backward that people are constantly looking for a devil to blame for the results they are not getting. Constantly looking for a devil to blame for the results they cannot get. 
not looking inwards to find out where they are lacking in their expertise. Because only experts excel in their careers. Only what? Experts excel in their career. And expertise is a product of exercise. So when you exercise yourself in your relevant area of concern, you begin to develop expertise in it. You begin to develop what? Expertise in it. I am convinced, like it is said in quite many quarters, that 80% of what makes any man is built into himself by himself. So we've gone through school and with different papers and different degrees and we came out of town and we are getting different results that most of the time don't look the same as to the ratings that we had in school. Somebody will have a first class degree and he comes to town, he can't get a last class result because he has knowledge but he has no skill. And they don't, knowledge is not marketable, it is skill that you market. A BSc in computer programming does not give you a job. It's your ability on the system that gives you a job. A PhD in architecture does not give you a business. It is your expertise in the profession that gives you a business. A wise man scaled the city of the mighty and casted down the strength of the confidence thereof. Get me an expert. You see, nobody will care what color he has. Oprah said, excellence is the greatest deterrent against racism and sexism. Just get the result. Nobody will care whether it's a man or a woman. Nobody will care whether it's a black or white. Excellence is the greatest deterrent between, you know, against racism and sexism. Nobody cares what race you belong. Get the result, and people are there to, 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 to buy your product. Have what they need, and they are there after you. So we need to understand that skill is a requirement in the covenant. Now we have Father Abraham our covenant father, in Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, his brother was taken captive and he was going to launch a counterattack to rescue his brother. So he took his servants, his trained servants, come and say train. train. Uh -huh. His trained servants, born in his house, Genesis 14, 14, and he pursued them. And the Bible said, they had a victory. But he took what? Trained servants. He took his trained servants, born in his house. He went against the enemy with skilled men, equipped men. 318 of them, and they rescued Lot from the captors. Trained. So training is part and parcel of the covenant. Training is what? Part and parcel of the covenant. Training, 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 training. I watched the Royal Marine in Afghanistan in their training camp. And uh, <laughs> there is no way any rebel can confront those fellows. They can pass through water, pass through tunnel against their enemy. Training. Training. So training is a device through which skills are acquired. So training, whether formal or informal, is a requirement if you must acquire skill in your career. We 
there are five powerful pictures and scriptures which defines our pursuits in life, biblical illustrations that helps us to see what our life is like in terms of the pursuit of our purpose. Now, the Bible describes our destiny as a physical building. What do I call it? Physical building. Now, you see, Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. He said, and I, as a master builder, have laid the foundations and others are building on it. So, we are builders. Every pursuit in destiny is a kind of building. And the color of your building is a function of your expertise. Hello? The color of your building, the beauty of your building, is a function of your expertise. Now, you see, in Luke 22 and verse 28 to 30, he said, which of you wants to build a tower who will not foresee down and count the cost, whether he has enough to build it or not? Or else he will start the building and midway, he will not be able to continue and everybody passing by will start mocking him. So we are called as builders. And as builders, we need to learn the art of building. So the color, the beauty, the glamour of every destiny is a function of his expertise in his pursuit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's very important. Very important. Also, we are called husband men, or call it farmers. He said the husband man that labors will be, should be the first partake of the fruits. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 6. So we are called farmers. And you know that there is a lot of skill required in farming. You don't carry your seed and go and sow at any time. There's a time to sow. There's a time to apply your fertilizer. There's a time, I mean, you see, it's your expertise that determines the level of harvest that you have. So every common sense farmer will get only common sense, common sense level of results. It takes special sense to get a special harvest. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? So if we are farmers, then we need this skill of farming to become successful farmers. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. I have planted and Apollo has watered and God is bringing the increase. So we are called farmers. So the journey of life is the journey of farmers. The journey of life is the journey of builders. And then all of these areas require one degree of expertise or another. You can't get as much result without some degree of expertise. You have 10 acres of land planting the same thing under the same atmosphere. Someone gets twice the harvest of the other because he applied some other techniques that the other person doesn't know about. There cannot be any colorful destiny without expertise. It's not possible. Also, we are called to be soldiers. And you know, in soldiering, skill is the thing. In those days, Saddam Hussein was boasting himself. He has one million footmen. The world has left how many people you have. It's how much skill they acquire. And the world will never forget the desert storm assault on Iraq. It was super military tactics. They sized him up and brought him down. You can't compare the U.S. military with any military formation in Africa. You can't. Reason. We are not exposed to the level of training that they are exposed to, perhaps. And we don't have the level of equipment that they have. The difference is not because they have better brain. They don't have better brains, but they have better trainers. So if we are soldiers, we need skill so we don't get killed in the battle for it. We need what? Skill so we don't get killed. 
Did you notice what Afghanistan was using? The old time Asian day gun. You set it up like this, and when it's boom, you run. <laughs> Without relevant current skill, you don't command attention. Is it possible for someone to call himself a secretary today who is not computer literate? Is it possible? It can only be a local secretary in a local village where they use the ancient typewriter and when he's typing, the whole office will be awake. <laughs> so if you are called to be a soldier, then you obviously need training so you can acquire the skill that can secure you when you go to war. You can be sure of returning whole with your two hands, your two legs, and your one head. <laughs> now also we are called sportsmen. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26, all that are in a race run all, but one receives a prize. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 26. So run that you may obtain. So run that you may obtain. So we are wrestlers. He said, I do not fight as one beating the air, but as certainly. You see? So it's, you don't go to the wrestling ring because they call you a wrestler in your village. In the first round, they may scatter you into spare parts. <laughs> By the time they take you up and bounce you, boom, your hand will go differently, your leg will go differently. <laughs> Every professional sportsman has a coach. The coach is heavily paid to enhance his training. For expertise in his field of sports. One Nigeria famous basketballer in the US had a problem of getting at the basket from a particular range in the basketball field. So this young chap had to engage a coach and was throwing from that end under the training of the coach 500 times a day. Now, 500 times a day, the next season, the people who had marked his weakness didn't know he had solved this problem. <laughs> so every time he got to that range, they left him because they know he would never get the basket. And then he would just go from behind and throw it up. And it enters, go from behind and throw it up. So he stayed at that range to deceive them. And then more stars were added to his crown through acquisition of relevant skill through training. What do I call it? Training. No matter how anointed, no matter how gifted, if you lack the required skill, you never cause waves in your profession. You need the skill to get there. There was a Gallup post in America some years ago which indicated that 80% of the American millionaires come from poor and middle class families. Then the question is, where are the children of the millionaires? They didn't have the skill to sustain the wealth of their fathers, so they became poor. Eighty percent of the American millionaires came from poor and middle-class families. That means eighty percent of children of millionaires ended up becoming poor because they could not, they didn't have the skill to manage the wealth of their fathers. We 
are so pessimistic in this part of the world that when somebody gets a result, you say he's very lucky. That's why. Otherwise, I graduated before him. <laughs> you can't tell what he was doing. You know, in Judges chapter 13 and verse 15, or no, verse 25, there was a man called Samson. Samson was exercising himself in the field. He was exercising himself in the field before he came to town to start uprooting gates. So it was not only the anointing, it was the exercises that gave him the expertise required so he could uproot the gate of Nairobi and carry it to the mountain. If you're a sportsman without adequate training, resulting in adequate skill, you don't be participating, you don't have any medal. Very important. If you are a farmer, a builder, a sportsman, a soldier, you know that training and skill is a principal factor in determining the level of results we ever command. Amen. And then we are also called traders. What is it? Traders. In Matthew 25 and verse 14 to 30, we are called traders. He gave them, and the first one went and he gave them talents. Every one of them, according to their several abilities. So we have talent, and we are called to trade our talents for profitable living. Amen. Matthew 25 verses 14 through to 30. So if we are traders, then we don't just look for capital. We must, first of all, acquire the skill in the trade we want to get involved in. Otherwise, your capital will be gone in no time. Money without financial intelligence, someone said, is money soon gone. So, it is not just capital you need. To become a successful trader, you need the required skill in the specific area of trade that you are involved in. Now, I had a brother many years ago now, I mean, he said he wanted to go and be buying electronics from West African countries and be bringing it to Nigeria. No problem, so I gave them some money. The, the material didn't arrive till tomorrow. <laughs> they collected it from him from the place where they bought it. So he arrived home alone. May the Lord forgive him. <laughs> he went with money, he arrived naked. <laughs> I said, where are the goods? <laughs> he said, they are with the custom. <laughs> what, where are the papers from the custom? He was looking. Where are the custom people? He was looking. So, his international trade crashed at the first attempt. <laughs> oh, no. We take too many things for granted. That's why we are granted. Too many things for granted. He went out with money. He came back with only his soul. Thank God we didn't lose his soul in the process. He had no idea. All he needed to was to be first an apprentice with a successful across-the-border trader and do that for one year or two years, understanding intricacies of the trade, the traffic, the payments, and see where it will best be sold when he gets to Nigeria. But he didn't have that time. I mean, I know trading is what I've been doing all my life. Okay, don't cry. This is money. My money never came back. <laughs> Amen. And you are aware I never gave him another one forever. <laughs> Once beaten, twice shy. <laughs> the most successful trader group in Nigeria are the Igbos. If you have a master's in business admin as an Igbo man, 
you will still go through tutelage under a trader before you can get into a business. And you'll be there for three years, four years. Most of the times, under illiterates who have been in the business and know when to buy, how much to buy, and where to sell, and what profit margin to put on it to make it go fast. But there's another group. I won't mention the group. <laughs> Amen. They don't believe in apprenticeship at all. They believe in paper qualification. They say, I have BA marketing. And then the first time in the market, it crashed. <laughs> Amen. Skill. It is not a function of the papers you carry. It is a function of the tactics you have acquired, the strategies you have built up in handling your assignment. Papers have no value in the marketplace. It is products that they sell. Amen. If you have BSc biochemistry, and you prepare your water, clean water, portable water, and they discover that it is not as hygienic as the one that is manufactured or prepared by an illiterate. Nobody will look at what papers you carry. They will go for the one who has what is healthy for their body. Did you understand what I'm talking about? You know, our problem in Africa is that age is accepted as superior in mentality. The older you are, the wiser you become. <laughs> that is the philosophy of the average Africa. It's entrenched in our culture. So when an old man is talking in your home and you have a view, you have no power, no cultural ability to express it. He'll tell you, shut up! An old man is talking and you are trying to answer him. <laughs> Who is your mother? <laughs> and when was she born? <laughs> Amen. And then some of these old people cannot drive. Now, if he now sits down by your steering, will you enter the car? So age is not a factor when we are talking about expertise and skill. Expertise and skill has to be consciously acquired, formally or informally. Without expertise, you can't be sure of what you're doing. When you leave your life to chance, you don't have a chance. Let me tell you why... We are not afraid of tomorrow in this mission. We didn't get to where we are by chance. We got to where we are by facts, scriptural strategies, not schemes and surmises, scriptural strategies, tactics, not tricks. Scriptural tactics that to build the church, you feed the church, and the church grows to the level of the quality of what it's being fed into them. It's not scheming, it's scriptural tactics. He makes me to lie down on green pastures. So you keep the pasture evergreen. They are eager to come to church. They are eager. Their mouth is watering. They want to eat the word of life. You know why you are here today? Yesterday was beneficial to you. If it wasn't, you won't come. If it was dry, nothing to add to you, you won't bother yourself coming down here. The reason you are here is because yesterday was a blessing to you. 
and you can't afford to miss today, so you push all appointments away. Come on, get off. I'm going. <laughs> you know, <it's> a... <laughs> when it comes to ministry, and anyone is called by God and he stays with me to learn my skill in ministry for two weeks with an open heart, it will blow his world open. Amen. I don't waste my time praying on what God said I should do. Amen. I learn how to do it so I can keep on doing it. Amen. Have you ever prayed God? Come and go to the toilet for me. Have you ever done it? <laughs> he gave you and I enough common sense to know that if you don't want to spoil your dress, when you are pressed, where do you go? Straight to the toilet. <laughs> now, you know, you are all faith powerful people. Maybe you came back from church and you are tired and you are the woman of the house. And have you ever asked, oh God, let your angels take over the kitchen and cook for us? <laughs> eh? You may die before the prayer is answered. <laughs> when the angels come, they are not coming to cool, they are coming to carry you away. <laughs> Amen. Now you see, how many people have to pray, oh God, what should we eat in this house today? Until you speak, we are not going to know. Oh Lord, speak. What do we eat today? Do we eat rice or eat some movie top? Oh God, speak. Speak for thyself and hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you start praying oh god bless this business he said oh boy do you have the skill <laughs> Amen. now see that my little brother was a christian baptized in the holy ghost speaking in tongues he lost everything He lost everything. God used him to teach me patience, teach me forgiveness. <laughs> Amen. So time spent in acquiring skill is not a time wasted, it's a time invested. Who has heard such a thing, who has seen such a thing, shall the nation be, be born at once? That before she traveled, she brought forth. Before a pain came upon her, she brought forth a man child. Who has heard such a thing, who has seen such a thing? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. Isaiah 66 and verses 7 and 8. You see, nothing happens by chance. Every triumph is preceded by a travail. Hello? As soon as Zion triumphed, I mean, travailed, she brought forth her children. So you cannot accomplish your purpose without first engaging in the travail of training. The travail of training. The travail of training. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Jesus came here, and up until 30, he was getting ready to explode on his world and, you know, fulfill his mission. He was in the temple, in the synagogue, as his custom was. He was constantly between sitting with the lawyers, <laughs> sitting with the Pharisees, both asking them questions and answering their questions. And they marveled. They were astonished at his understanding. And when Jesus came on the scene, he began making references to Jeremiah the prophet, to Isaiah the prophet, to Hosea, to Moses. Hello? Is it not it in your law? Is it not your tradition? So he was so equipped about the people he was to address that when he came on the scene, he was master.
at the age of 12, they were looking for him. And he said to, those, to Mary and Joseph, don't you know I should be about my father's business? What business? He was hearing the teachers of the law. Asking them questions. And answering their questions. He was beefing up. He was getting ready. He was getting equipped. To be able to, uh, to fulfill his mission. If Jesus needed that, you and I would need it. Then came the twelve. In Mark chapter 3 verse 14. He called the twelve that they may be with him. So those twelve apostles were under tutelage. So they called them disciples. Disciples means apprentices. Hello. They were his apprentices. He called and chose the twelve that they might be with Oh. 